Hi friends, welcome to Yash Classes. Today we will understand about one of the important event of plant physiology in which light energy is converted into chemical energy. Water molecules are also photooxidized to produce oxygen. Chemical energy in the form of ATP and NADPH is further utilized to reduce carbon dioxide into carbohydrate. The phase in which light energy is converted into chemical energy is called light dependent phase or light reaction and that takes place in thylakoid. The phase in which chemical energy is converted into carbohydrate is called light independent phase or dark reaction that takes place in the stroma of photosynthetic apparatus that we know chloroplast. Six molecule of CO2 and 12 molecules of water utilized by the plant in which light energy is required and this light energy is absorbed by chlorophyll molecules. Six molecule of CO2 reduces to carbohydrate and 12 molecule of water photooxidized to produce six molecule of oxygen. And this process is one of the important process which is done by the plant and this capacity is only lies with the plant and this process feeds biosphere that process we know as photosynthesis in this video we will mainly focus on photosynthesis in higher plants in the previous slides we have seen different reactions were taking place in the process which we can dissect into few points. Plants convert light energy into chemical energy. It is a redox process means oxidation reduction process. Carbon dioxide is reduced to carbohydrate and water is photooxidized to oxygen. Now we can frame our definition of photosynthesis by using these points. The process by which plant utilize light energy to reduce atmospheric CO2 into carbohydrate and oxidize water to release oxygen is called photosynthesis. Before going into the detail, Let's understand about the basic structure of chloroplast. It is a double membrane structure. The outermost layer is called outer chloroplast membrane followed by inner chloroplast membrane. A coin like structure is called thylakoid which is a single membrane structure. And in this membrane only we have numerous chlorophyll molecules which absorbs light energy and participate in a photosynthetic process. These thylakoids are joined together to form granum. The matrix of chloroplast is known as stroma and granum are interconnected with each other with the help of stroma lamellae. Thylakoids are a single membrane structure and that has so many pigment molecules in which chlorophyll molecules are primarily responsible for harvesting light energy. Let's see the chemical structure of chlorophyll molecules. Each chlorophyll molecule has porphyrin head and phytol tail. Porphyrin head is composed of four 
pyrrole ring A, B, C, D or in some books you will find 1, 2, 3, 4 in which magnesium takes the central position. Phytol is a 20 carbon tail and this head and phytol tails are interconnected with the help of aster bond. What is the structure of chlorophyll A? If in this structure CS3 is present at ring second or B here, then it is a chlorophyll A. If CHO present at ring second and B here, it becomes chlorophyll B. Chlorophyll C chlorophyll A without tail. If we cut the chlorophyll tail with this ester bond, then the chlorophyll will chlorophyll A will become chlorophyll C. Chlorophyll D in which this group is replaced by OCHO, then it will make it chlorophyll D and that will happen on the ring 1 or ring A. Chlorophyll A are present in higher plants, algae and cyanobacteria. Chlorophyll B in higher plants and green algae. Chlorophyll C in diatoms, dinoflagellates and brown algae. Chlorophyll D is present only in red algae. There are other pigments like carotenoid which are known as accessory pigments which absorbs light at 400 to 500 annum. Its characteristic color is orange and they uh, absorb light and transfer it to chlorophyll molecules. One of the important part I would like to mention here uh, for chlorophyll uh, is that that in this head uh, there are some loosely uh, arranged electrons which uh, uh, are responsible or involved in the energy transfer and which ultimately lead to uh, photochemical reaction. Okay, now uh, let's uh, discuss about when a molecule absorbs light energy, what happens? These are the different energy levels as 0, as 1, as 2, as 0 is the ground state. If a light of blue wavelength is given, electron goes up to as 2 state. When it comes back, releases its energy in the form of heat. When we give red light, it just reaches to S1 state because wavelength of the red light is more than the blue light and wavelength is inversely proportional to energy. That's why red has less energy compared to blue then it just reaches to S1 state. From S1, when electron comes back to ground state, it releases its energy in the form of light, which is known as fluorescence. Or it may emit some amount of heat and stays in a matter-stable state, which is known as triplet state. In triplet state, when electron comes back to the ground state, it releases its energy in the form of light which is known as phosphorescence. So the difference between phosphorescence and fluorescence is in fluorescence emission of light is quick but in phosphorescence it is a delayed emission of light. Triplet state is that state as a biology student you should understand that triplet state and Singlet state. Electron stays more in the triplet state. That's why molecule has a chance to talk to the electron 
or we can say in in other terms that at this state electron can participate in a reaction suppose a molecule releases electron it becomes a plus release of electron that is oxidation suppose this electron is accepted by b then b will become b minus and this process is reduction so in this reactions what we observe oxidation and reductions now this is a redox reaction and that is happening only because triplet state give electrons to 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 talk about to other molecules they share thoughts then reaction takes place then uh, chemical reaction uh, takes place which is powered by light and which is known as photochemical reaction this this term is very important please remember that now how energy is transferred to a reaction center during photosynthesis these are the different light harvesting complexes and this is the reaction center light harvesting complex that includes pigments proteins keratinides chlorophyll molecules so many things and now how energy is transferred this is an important slide now how from this energy electron is released from the reaction center as we discussed in the earlier slide now light energy is absorbed by the pigment molecules it resonates this pigment molecule resonates and transfers energy nearly 90 percent to the reaction center and from here electron is released as we discussed in the previous slide and it is accepted by an acceptor and this reaction is called photochemical reaction now you can relate this energy transfers in electron this is the antennae molecules or the light harvesting complex and the p680 releases electron it becomes p680 plus then again it goes to pheophytin that we will discuss in the coming slides so energy transfers from one pigment to another that is due to resonance and a smart thing with uh, with this is that nearly 90 percent energy reaches to reaction center now uh, can we uh, measure which wavelength of light is maximally absorbed by chlorophyll molecule when we plot a graph between absorbance and optical density versus visible range wavelength, the obtained curve is known as absorption spectrum. Here we see that maximum absorption is at blue range and red range. Similarly, when we plot a graph between action induced by light and wavelength, then the obtained curve is action spectrum in case of uh, intact chloroplast if we take it the oxygen evolution rate as the action induced by light versus the wavelength so it is clear here that at blue and the red maximum oxygen evolution is seen when we compare both these graph action and absorption and action spectrum we find they are superimposing each other that shows the importance of absorption and action spectrum we can say by this graph that particular absorption is responsible for particular action induced by 
light energy of a particular pigment here we are considering chlorophyll molecule if we take phytochrome cytochrome or any pigment molecule that senses light we have to uh, see its action when it finds they are superimposing each other then particular action is responsible for a particular action this is the importance of absorption and action spectrum as we know that photosynthesis has two important phase uh, light dependent phase and light independent phase uh, in which uh, we will discuss topic wise arrangement of ps2 ps1 cytochrome b6 F complexes how they are embedded in thylakoid membrane what is the non cyclic and cyclic photophosphorylation how oxygen is evolved from oxygen evolving complex from the the uh, magnesium ion and this complex is present on the luminal face of uh, ps2 then q cycle and its significance then the production of ATP molecules will be discussed in detail with the uh, most accepted theory of Michel. Uh, then we will uh, move towards light dependent phase or dark reactions or carbon fixation reactions uh, in which we will cover the Calvin Benson cycle, C3 cycle. Uh, then how plant concentrate a CO2. Uh, in the, in the in the cycle c4 in the camp plants and how uh, uh, c2 cycle takes place uh, in, in in the chloroplast which is also known as photorespiration and besides this we will cover some of the landmark experiments related to photosynthesis uh, like uh, tw engelman experiment robert hill reaction Red drop and immersion enhancement effect, jag and drop experiment. Thanks for uh, watching my video. Uh, we will come with uh, some uh, other topics of plant physiology. Till then, bye bye.